Hey guys, what's going on? Lucky here. I am at the shop. Does every video start like that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Joey's here today. The ever irreplaceable and yes. ultimate super PA. PA, there's just not enough letters there. Way more than that. Mark King up on the hill. King of the hill. Yeah, there we go. King I of like the hill. That is buried in all my parts that are just, I don't even know. I'm going to zoom in just in case anybody sees something up there that they might want to buy later. All that stuff is going to the swap meet. I'll let you know when. There's a lot of stuff up there, huh? Yeah. Any good stuff? stuff? Yeah, oh. there's definitely some good stuff. Yeah, see? All right. So you heard it from Mark. So anyway, today we are working on Joey's 70, real SS? SS-ish. Factory AC, I can tell by the hole in the firewall, but it's not there no more. It's got some custom wiring I see. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go, that is 19, I have 80 Honda. Cooling fan shroud, cooling fan relays. Looking at the colors, I'm guessing Honda for sure. Either way, we're snatch all that out later. But uh, we put a sway bar on it. See, we're driving this thing around without a sway bar. And we put a new uh, pitman arm on it because it had a certain amount of sloppage in there. And we're gonna un Mickey Mouse some stuff. Um, it has a fuel suck. You guys are probably not familiar with the term fuel suck because they're not actually available. They don't exist. <laughs> you know what it's called? A fuel pump. pump. Exactly, it's a fuel pump. I mean, it's supposed to be in the back somewhere. Either way, we're gonna get rid of that. But right now, we're thinking about doing something about this uh, donk. Look, you got the donk thing? Yeah. Sage? Donk master, no disrespect. Just saying, this isn't, this isn't the look we're looking for here. So we are gonna take a spin in the shop truck, cause it's the shop truck, up to Alden American in beautiful Signal Hill, California, and pick up coilover conversion for this thing. Take out those coils, put in coilover shocks, and this thing will be adjustable. Put it at the right height you want. If you wanna go donk master, if you wanna go full stage, up, up in the air on 26s, you can do it. If that's what you're into, cool. Anyway, we're gonna hit the road right now. See you up there.
Okay, we made it. No, the lights make me look like I have no hair then. Oh, okay. Hey, I need the well, darkness for the hair. What I can do is hold my head like this and direct the, oh, the glare. The glare, my friend. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we made it safely here. As you can see, a very conservative driver. I was driving mellow because Joey was in the car with me. Um, uh, Gary already walked us around and showed us everything, but to protect the secrets that are hidden around here, I didn't record any of that. Uh oh, watch out, you got secrets right there. Top secret stuff? I got a hammer just like that. <laughs> That's just how I build stuff too. Secret dino room, top secret dino room in there. If I'm shooting anything, I'm not supposed to shoot. Just punch Gary, or punch Joey. Did you say all those boxes are just full of springs? Yeah, all those boxes are full of springs. Capitalizing on your vertical storage? Exactly. We got 26 foot ceilings and we try to fill them up. Yeah, and you, you're like, you're still wasting space. Exactly. Well, not really, because your rafters up there and your forklift's got to go that high. Exactly. Very cool. But check it out over here. I got Birdo. He's uh, putting your order together right now. So in a few minutes, uh, your order will be all packaged up and ready to pick up. Very cool. Does he pay his bill? You know what? I still owe him, actually. <laughs> He's uh, my contractor. He does all the, built the wall and everything at my shop. So uh, the other day, I'm just like, man, you know, if there was a hole in the ceiling and I had stairs, I could go upstairs. And then he goes, just give me the key. And I got back to the next day and there was a hole in the ceiling and I have stairs. I was just like, all right. Very cool. All right. I don't want to let out too many other secrets, so I'll be back when we get these things all loaded up. All right, so I shut it off, and Gary's like, hey, if you want to shoot the spring room, it's just like I've seen a spring or two. I have not seen this many springs before, though. Man. Post spring? Man, spring has spring has spoken. What's all this shiny stuff? Oh, we still do chrome springs for the hot rods. Hot rodders. And we have the old sign off the original building right here. I remember that, dude. I used to go there. That was in Carson. Yep, that was the Carson right on front. It was like a converted house garage or something like that. It was something yep. weird. I remember I had to walk through one spot and then kind of go down a hallway and people were working on a bench in the and back. And then you also had to have the secret handshake. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think somebody back there yeah. smoked. Like, it was like constantly smoking. That probably was uh, the previous owner, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I went there once. I had a set of Coney shocks. And I, hey, can you do anything with those? He said, like, well, you know, these are probably off some rare race car because these have serial numbers and all these specs. I was like, I don't know anything about that. I just kind of want to put them on the back of my C10. And they got them all rebuilt. Actually, he referred me to somebody, and then we sent them back to Coney, got them all rebuilt. When they came back, they had dyno sheets and everything. And they're like, these were off of like a Craco formula car or something, and they're worth like eight grand. Or I was just like, what? And then I sold them right away. And I, I bought a set of you guys' shocks. Yeah. yeah. I was just like, what? It's enough money to fix a lot of stuff. So here's a couple of cool things. These guys make shocks that fit around there, or make springs that fit around their shock. You use the spanner nut to raise your height, but the top of it is the same width as a factory one, or a factory spring. So the bottom's narrower, goes over a coilover shock, and the top fits into the pocket of a factory spring. All different rates, all different lengths. So you can actually put a coilover shock on your factory car without doing any modifications at all. Now you can adjust your ride height, adjust the, how the car rides, performs, handles, and you're not really cutting anything up. Take it all back apart and put it back to stock if you are a number counter, of which I am not. Right, Gary? I am not either. Okay, cool. And then if you've got straight coilovers, there they are. Long coilovers, there they are. But yeah. Yeah, we do... Uh... Is that called a progressive spring? Well, it's technically not a progressive. It is a linear spring. Right. But uh, the uh, coilovers, we do the two and a half inch. We do them from a six inch all the way up to 12 inch. Spring. In length. Yeah, in yeah. length. All right. 
And then spring rates, the lowest spring rate we offer is 100, and then we go all the way up to 800. Huh, that's a, a lot. lot. Of springs. I think we have those springs in our, uh, we put that Cummins 12 valve in the El Camino. <laughs> yeah. We well, need, we have, we have something like that. We needed some springs for that, yeah. so anyway. All right, let's go check on our stuff. I didn't recognize that guy until I started saying, hey, where do I know you from? Mm -hmm. He's a good kid, though. Here's the keys. Is that a hovercraft back there? <laughs> Just looking so like it. Anything else you can do for me, just take care of it and handle it. I will.
Okay, so we just got back from all the American shops. Do I have their banner up anywhere? I don't, but they gave me a banner, so that's going up pretty darn quick here. There's the box. We survived the ride. And uh, the Mustang's back from the alignment shop. It's looking good. And then uh, Joey is slave for a day. Getting ready to take some stuff up here. We just did that sway bar and either arm this morning. And now we're gonna undo part of it again. And I think we might, uh, that's it, it's up all the way. We'll clean it up a little bit under here, snatch some stuff apart, put those coilovers in. And let's get that box open, drag that box over here. Let's open it up, see what's in here. I saw him building the shocks, but let's see, let's see what all is involved with a shock kit. So this is your standard shock suspension coilover conversion kit, as I recall. Boy, we were there. They didn't really have to do all. They could have just handed us the stuff. But they went ahead and went that extra mile. All right, here's a quick peek of everything. Also, if you want to check them out, you can do that. Take a picture of that with your smartphone. Bing! Take you right to the spot. So yeah, I'm excited to hook these up. We can do the front first, and then do the rear. All right, we're about to get this party started. Okay, so in the middle of all this, we're doing some texting back and forth with the guys from Hot Rod Garage about ordering parts for the next build, something about bringing the bone marrow back because Alex Taylor broke it, hashtag Alex T Taylor broke it. And uh, in the meantime, uh, text Alex, or it's a group text, so this is how we do it. We're doing a group text to everybody that's involved in ordering parts and stuff. And uh, in the middle of that group text, Alex is obviously in it. And she's sent a picture, here's the picture, saying she can't text, she's getting ready to make a pass. Pretty funny. And I was like, why you can't text and can't text and make a launch at the same time? And then uh, ends up that launch was, uh, I don't know, 206 mile an hour, six second, something yeah, crazy is what it was. Either way, um, right now we're getting ready to pull this apart. This is a pretty straightforward way to do stuff. Um, here, just watch. Just enjoy the show. They're from a doctor's office. They're really comfortable. Now, if you have old ball joints that are old and brittle, the boots and all, then you probably don't want to use a Pickle fork. It's just fun to, fun to say. It's just fun to say. However, these are replacement ball joints. And uh, the boots are in pretty good shape. The other option would be to strike it as hard as you can with a uh, sledgehammer right there. A couple of hits and it will come loose. You can also put a hammer head on the impact and or on the air hammer. Just a blunt hammerhead and just do the same thing, hit it right there. Uh, I can't find my hammerhead, so. That's done. Uh, key note here is make sure the shocks are still in place, just in case they were to come loose. So now we're gonna lower it down, take the shock off, Put a floor jack underneath it as far out as possible. You'll be able to jack it up, take that bolt off, and then lift the whole vehicle. The spring will fall out. Kill shot, see that? Kill shot. We're not reusing any of this, so I don't really care if we lose the nut. Tip this one off over here. 
tool. Okay, so the shocks are unbolted and I'm jacking it up. You want to jack it up all the way out at the ball joint. Otherwise, you end up just lifting the car and not actually compressing the spring at all. I'm going to lift this up just far enough. I can see the upper control arm move. Now I'll be able to push down, take the nut off. And then be able to lift the upper, upper control arm out of the way, put the nut back on. So the idea of putting the nut back on is not to not lose the nut, that helps that, but you want to protect those threads. The thing's going to get, be getting moved up and down. You put a doink on one of those threads, it becomes a nightmare to put together. Okay, so we got sidetracked because my buddy Rick from the mechanic shop stopped by. Bye, Rick! Later! And, uh, but while he was running his mouth, I can't get that guy to shut the hell up. Just kidding, he's a good guy. Uh, we put the shock together, and we are going to put them in. Oh, listen to the mechanic shop's handiwork. Right from the get-go. Pole starts way off, and starter, starter needs shims. Just saying. Just saying, Rick, if you watch this. I diagnosed that for you, free of charge. <laughs> All right, so. You can put the washer on without the rubber grommet and one of the nuts at first because because it needs to see a little bit of compression. Uh oh. Hey, can you go over there and grab me the nuts for the actual shop? These are flat. So you just need to find the right spot for them to kind of lock in. Should be fine. Um, this whole assembly also comes with these little plates that prevent you from fatiguing or pushing all the way through the lower control arm. So you lay them down there. You have to take off the nut plates, the factory nut plates. If they're not already broken, you have to take them off. They also recommend, well, I've heard people say you can, you should put the bolt down from the top and then put the nuts on the bottom in case the nuts fall off. Go with me on this. In case you do it wrong and don't tighten the nuts, put the bolts down from the top. How about you just do it right and you tighten them the way they're supposed to be? I get it. I see what you're saying. Just not really agreeing with it. All right, so hold it right there, pick her up, hold it right there. I can steer this so you guys can see. I can get this up out of the way. So we're going to put this base plate in. Just want to make sure that the shop fits in the opening of the control arm neatly.
So it all looks like a lot more work than it actually is. I mean, I would like to clean it all off like it was super difficult to do, but it really isn't. Trick is just to make sure you tighten everything and put it back where it's supposed to be. Me tightening that, especially after all that crap I talked about, making sure you tighten everything. Seems important. Okay, caliper back. Yeah, I was thinking that when I took this apart earlier, that somebody made them too tight, but they were fine. I was just whining. And they're anti-seize already. Super! Alright. So now we're going to put the other side together. You, know, you don't want to see that again. And that's all said and done. We'll be right back and we will... Uh, um, by we, I mean Joey will sit under here for a half hour with that spanner wrench and turn those nuts. It's just a pain in the butt to get the right height. Have to set it down, gotta go back and forth a few times. Oh, I think before we do that, we'll probably do the rears. So, uh, we'll be right back. Definitely some wall hangers, huh? Huh? Some wall hangers? Oh, those aren't even that old. A little bit of pressure, but not a lot. Just be careful you don't smack yourself in the teeth. 
in your tooth. Okay, and it was uh, ASL, uh, American Sign Language. Mm -hmm. A girl at a concert or a party that she was poolside doing Sir Mixed Baby Got Back, but with silent. And she was very accurate. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Okay, have to take a quick break and load stuff upstairs. I am a non-certified forklift operator. Okay, lower shock mount. Very simple. You take out the hardware that goes on the rear lower lower control arm. You get new stuff. All grade eight, all pretty. Verify that this goes through. Oh, please. Here with two sets of hardware, I wonder if it's for different size bushings, that's what it is. Let me just check. Yes, this is larger. So, well, you would think that we came across something that doesn't work. Boil it down to something that does work. I think. I could be wrong. It was wrong once before. What? That's crazy. It goes right through. Take out the stock shock mount, which would be on there. Right, this up there comes with flat washers. Okay. 
before I get too into that, I will delicately reposition this bolt in, along with this one. It's a delicate operation. Just is is washers on the inside because of the thickness of the bracket don't quite fit, so I'm just gonna polish on the end. Should we chuck it up and mill it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, considering you gotta. Yeah, yeah. So while we're doing this, we're actually moving a bunch of stuff around the shop, so everything's a little bit of a mess. Be a little warm. Tech tip. If you grind on metal, it's hot. What are you, Scar uh, fucking, what's his name? Scorsese? <laughs> Golden logos in or out? Out. Yeah, definitely. That uh, the instructions. Okay, so we took a little break and uh, piled more stuff up there for Mark. He's super pleased about that, right, Mark? Yeah, he's not talking anymore. Either way, here they are, all installed. The 
bracket up in the front just takes the place of the stock shock mount, turns it into an eyelet. And this whole apparatus on the bottom bolts up to where your stock shock was, and then where the uh, stock bolts for lower control armor. It's differentials clamshell in between the two. Let's set the right height still, which is just simply this in the screw right here. If you want it higher, you make it higher. You want it lower, you turn it lower. And then after you get it, your desired right height, use the Allen and just lock it down. Oh, I believe there's eight positions on the adjustments, which we put on the inside. And we set them on five or six, I believe. Good place to start. All back together. We're gonna crank up the back because I'm sure it's just too low. And then we'll uh, put some shocks on it, or put the tires on it, set it on the ground and check the, check the right height. You need to drive it for a couple of days or at least a few hours, hit some dips and compress the shocks to get them to settle to the actual height or length of the shock. Um, front dropped half an inch overnight yeah. and he only drove it a couple blocks, maybe a mile. Yeah. So I like to put 10, 15 miles on and uh, go from there. Uh, cool thing now is he can take these curb blasters off actually run the exhaust up and over you can buy like a hooker black heart come right out of there come right up back here gives you a little more ground clearance i'm sure these these things look like they they drag anyway hey uh crank these things up like two inches and these are you can do them by hand you don't need to use a tool and then uh make them even left to right and uh then we'll put it on the ground and go up and down a few times so we get that right height. Or maybe about an inch higher than we need to see. Anyway. Okay, so there is the Chevelle on the ground. It's a little bit high in the back, but has zero miles on those rear springs. He's gonna drive it for a couple of days. They'll settle down and then we will, then we will uh, measure it up and make sure it's level and at the attitude that he wants. But it looks pretty good. Oh. Got a visitor here, the Typhoon A. Actually, this is a real Typhoon. This is from Hot Rod Garage. We uh, cobbled it apart and cobbled it back together. It runs, gonna make it drive for the payoff. So that's the next project. Uh, I should apologize to my neighbors now. All wheel drive, turbocharged, good times. <laughs> anyway. That's it. Thanks for watching the video, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, leave some comments. Share. Sharing is always good. And uh, smash the like button and hit the ring the bell to be notified and just whatever else they're saying out there. Thanks, you guys. See you later.